Okay guys, I'm so excited for today. We're gonna do part three, mirroring with the Stamparatus. And this is CMC Stamps, stands for Color Me Crazy. All right, let's dive in and get started. Thanks for coming today. Um, I'm hoping to get this in one video, but there's a chance that I might have to put it in two videos um, because we're doing two cards. So as you can see, we're gonna do this really pretty. You've got a friend of me pig card looking at each other. Um, just so you know, we're going to do this one at the very end. So for my avid stampers that want to learn this cool technique on, on how the pigs like look at each other and how to do the watercoloring on that, stay to the end or fast forward to the end. But I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss the first part because the first part we're going to make this cool card and you are going to like love this. If you can't tell, there's some wink of Stella. And we do some watercoloring again. So I've got a watercoloring class coming up, so I'm gonna be featuring some watercoloring stuff later. But we'll do this card first, and then we'll get to the cute little piggy card second. This also includes some paste, which is really fun. So let's just do a really cool view of these two cards. Make sure both of them are in. Okay, so we're gonna do this one first, and then we're gonna do the pigs second. All right, you ready? Let's jump in then. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the supplies that you'll need to cut. So I just cut um, a really cool Coastal Cabana piece here, and then I did, um, this is shimmery white stock, cardstock, and I love this stuff, love it. It's amazing, you probably can't see, but it's got like a cool shimmer. Um, it's meant for watercoloring, and Stampin' Up! still sells it. And then I stamped the hope out of a long stamp that we're gonna use later. And then I just will cut out the hope portion of it. We can cut it out with some scissors. And then just to show you kind of like a sneak peek, this is what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp them up here and have them reflect. We're also going to use a silicone mat. These things are amazing. See, it's got the Stampin' Up! logo on it. Um, I love these. This first one, we only use a silicone mat. We're not gonna use a Stamparatus, but we're gonna use a Stamparatus for my second one. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut, fussy cut this out since I have it right in front of me and might as well. Key to fussy cutting, here's a Trisha hack. I'm gonna be using the term Trisha hack throughout this video. And what I mean by Trisha hack is I have a tip or trick for you guys that will help you out and I'm just gonna call it a hack because it makes you it makes it a little more simple and how did I figure out these hacks by making mistakes tons and tons of mistakes so here's my first hack when you're cutting out make sure you take a deep breath I don't want anyone fainting or anything like that and then move your paper not your scissors and for this one we're leaving just kind of a little white I'm gonna speed this up Done. So now we have our cool little hope and we will be able to prop that up later. Let me bring out this cool <laughs> board that I use. I call it my watercoloring board and I just want to make sure that it's fully in. Okay, hoping that, that you guys can see that. I think you can. So there we go. All right, so here's all the stuff that I need. Paper towel. Uh, I'll go painter. I'm using the big tipped one, which I keep the blue cap on mine. And make sure, this is another Trisha hack. Make sure that you never put the water above this little line. This is like a fill line for your Agua painter. Okay, what happens when it goes beyond? Well, you're gonna get way too much water. It may ruin your paper, and definitely you have a high chance of ruining your project. So only go to the fill line, and in fact, I even go under the fill line. This one, we're gonna use a lot of water, so you're okay, but if you're not gonna like want a lot of water, you want more of a pigmented color, then you're gonna put it way less. Okay, let's move on then. Then you see my board, so my little trick with the board, one of the reasons I use it is because I do my coloring on here, and then I use some washi tape to gently put on after it's slightly dry and it dries flat. 
So it's like a miracle. So it's already like flat and just be careful when you take it off and also don't put it on when it's freshly wet. You may have some issues with it sticking to the tape. Okay, so we're gonna use this later. We just don't need it. But we need our cool little paper and we need our aqua painter and um, our paper towel. Also, I'm gonna get this ready just to start. I'm gonna use this uh, mint macaron. Now, Trisha hat to get some ink on top of this here, you just press your um, palms together. And this is kind of cool because it becomes your palette. A lot of times I'm going to wet, so I'm gonna slowly let this fill with water. And see now you can tell that it has some water in it. And I'm actually going to wet the area that I want to color. So I'm just wetting this down before I'm actually going to color. And I'm making sure I get all my corners. So if you can't tell, it has some wet. Now I'm squeezing a little bit of water into my lid and it becomes really watery. And I'm just gonna start at the bottom. Usually I start where I want it most concentrated, but this color is so light. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and um, start at the bottom and then once I get to the top, see how I'm going concentrated? Um, you can take any two colors and mix them to get the combination you want, which is really cool. Really cool little trick. I'm gonna do just one more layer on top here and listen to some music while I finish this up. Okay, to clean, I just squeeze and let two or three drops of water come out and go back and forth. I love, if you feel like you got too much color, you can dab off with this. I love that. You can dab off with your paper towel. All right, so I just wanted to show you this part of it. So wherever on here you want, you go ahead and just... Get your tape on there really well. Now when it comes down to like where it's wet, I kind of go a little bit lighter, especially because it's not very dry yet. Um, you also, if you have a heat tool, put it on level one and it will heat it for you. It will heat it and it will dry for you. It's amazing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my center there so it goes as flat as I can get it to be. Okay, there we go. I wanted to show the next part. So I have just basically colored this and I just colored this one in mint macaron. So you can see the difference between like the deep blue and the green. You can use either one is just fine. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do our cute little birds. So my trick with the birds is you can do one of two things. You can stamp up here first or stamp down here and this is where our silicone mat comes into play. But I just want you to know when you stamp up here, you're gonna stamp with the stays on. It just gets it like extra dark. And it then um, also when you do the wink of Stella, it should not bother it at all to get wet. So stays on up here when you're doing the birds up here. Since this is already dry, we can use Memento on the bottom. And I kind of like using Memento with my um, silicone mat because it's less likely to stain and I think it's more watery. So I think it does this technique way better. So guys, we're using the Memento Tuxedo Black. The stays on, I'm gonna set aside and use later. Okay, so just get it inked up really well. And I would suggest making sure that your Memento ink pad has been recently re-inked. And then come over here and stamp on here. And I find just a light stamp is great. And the key is to act quickly. Here is a Trisha hack. You either huff on it or act quickly. And I love this, this hack's kind of like, you can kind of see where it's gonna go and you just go straight down and you do not move. And it turned out so cool. So see this? Um, I'm just gonna rinse this off with water and soap. That's another Trisha hack coming right to you from my house. And I do make sure, another Trisha hack, before I do anything like this, I'm making sure there's no lint on this because it will stamp really funky. So um, make sure that you clean these off with soap and water beforehand. 
Don't use a paper towel to dry it because that leaves lint. Just let it air dry or use um, a, like a kitchen towel. All right, so now we're to the part that we can kind of hustle with this, this card. We've done some good things already. Okay, take your stays off, off, off. I have that little lid cover and then just get this so inked. And I also suggest making sure that you have your stays on um, re-inked. So there's these refill that you can get and that I, you got, I got this one from Stampin' Up. And it's just like a stays on inker, re-inker that can make sure that I stamp super well. Okay, lots of information, but now I love the photopolymer stamp. Hoping you can see, yes you can. Because now I can see, okay, how am I gonna make these suckers reflect? And the better the V, the better, because think about these birds fly in a V. Okay, make sure that you have fresh stays on ink so that it's gonna stamp the way that you want it to. Enjoy some music. Okay, I'm letting that dry just for a second and we'll come back and stamp the rest. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my saying. Oh, here it is. So remember we used this earlier with the hope and cut it out. Now we're inking this stamp up with our mint macaron. You can use any color really, but I liked how this looked. And I love how you can see where to stamp. Oh, I didn't get a small portion stamped. So I'm just gonna make sure that I push. Oh, we messed up a little bit, but guess what? There's no mistakes with crafting. There's only improvisation. So let's just improvise. I'll put a piece of white paper over that to finish it. Then I would get like um, like some of those mini dimensionals and pop that up right there. And let's go ahead and do our sun. I am opening up Mango Melody was the color I picked. And now that these guys have dried a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and do a sun. And I'm, in fact, probably gonna do multi two layers, and if you're really good at lining up stamps, you can do that, or you can even use your Stamparatus to do that, okay? Oh my goodness, we're almost done. Okay, one of the coolest things is using the Wink of Stella. I love this Wink of Stella. This is the clear gold one, or clear, I believe, is what it's called. Stampin' Up! still sells it. And now that everything's dry, I can go ahead and um, use this right over it and I am actually going to use my paper towel and see if I can't get a little bit more and so it's starting to just come down. There we go. I got it much more concentrated since I haven't used it in a while. It just didn't seem like it had a lot. And then you go ahead and paint just like a regular paintbrush where you want the glitter and I did more at the top and less at the bottom. Oh and since we're using Momento on the bottom I'd be very careful. Whoops. Got a little too much, which is fine. I'll just kind of dab off. Um, yes, so down here's Memento, so make sure you don't paint over that too much. These little guys, these are a little bit easier. It's probably gonna paint off some of my color. And I would, especially if I were you, give it a little bit more time to dry. But I just love that wink of Stella. See how cool that is? So yeah, just cut out a piece of paper if you ever do this. Stamp on it again and do that. Or you just use it as is. So I'll just decide how to do it. And then of course, to finish your card, I'm gonna put on some music and you just watch me finish this up. I did also want to mention that your stays on ink cleaner is essential on your photopolymer stamps. Now, if you happen to have a red rubber stamp that are now the cling, they caution you not to use the stays on cleaner. So what do you do? Trisha Hack, there is a brand new cleaner that Stampin' Up! has out and it looks like it's in kind of a thing like this. I have not gotten mine yet, but go ahead and use a cleaner like that. I also suggest having baby wipes available and nearby. I happen to use the Kirtland Brown baby wipes. And you can um, scrub these pretty well so that they'll come off a little bit better. 
So cling stamps, you just don't want getting wet and you don't want this yucky stays on cleaner getting underneath and ruining the cling. So be very careful. I would suggest just using it very lightly if you have a stamp that is red rubber, kind of like this one, and it clings really well. This one's not clean because I bought it before they came out with that. But that's how I would clean that off. Okay, you just set this aside and then later we'll come back with a towel and dry it up. Okay, now let's finish this card, you guys. I'm showing you the two different options of adhesives. My personal favorite is the multi-purpose green, I call it green glue, because um, it has such a, so it's defining characteristic is its green cap. But um, I like the green glue because I can move it around. It gives, for about 20 to 30 seconds, it has a little bit of leeway where it lets you move it around, and this is definitely my favorite. I especially use it when I use things that are coarse or have texture to it. Um, and then I love using my Snell. Just make sure that you can read the word Stampin' Up or Snell so that you know that you're going the right direction. Here we go. I would just get a couple mini dimensionals, cut them in half, put them like just in a couple spaces here and pop that up. And that is how simple that is, you guys. This card was created off of a card that I saw on Pinterest. Thank you so much for watching. I really want to show you the next card bad.